You are muted, Carolina. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm super excited to share this time together, this morning together. I'm going to just go over some housekeeping things. Um, there's going to be time for Q&A today towards the end of the session, but if you have any questions, just raise your hand and we'll try to address that during the presentation. Um, I'm going to show um, a lot of uh, case studies from clients that I have worked with, um, nothing like being visual, right, to learn. But in the beginning of the presentation, I'm going to go over some marketing basics. So if you already marketing savvy, don't be turned off. There is a reason why I'm doing this. Um, I wanted to um, explain a little bit today how important it is to know your ideal audience before you even create any content for your website and social media. That's crucial. And that's why I wanted to cover some basics. I don't know what kind of level of understanding of marketing you guys are, if you're established or not, but let's start it right there. I wanted to participate on this chat. I want to see everybody typing in there. What do you do and how long have you been in business? And if you are just starting out, I want it here as well. Just put over there in the chat so I can have an understanding where you're at in your journey. I'm going to read along and let's see what we get here. So hello, everybody. I see some familiar faces here, Emery. And Laurie McCaskey, they're, they've been photographed by me. <laughs> so good to see you here. And um, if you can, please put your faces in here, at least for a little bit, so I can see you. We can make a kind of a more connection. Um, then, you know, during the presentation, I want you guys to make a lots of notes. Hopefully you have a lot of value from the presentation. You, you'll be making lots of notes. So here we have... Uh, Deborah Britton, grant writing consulting business, and I'm an aspiring New York Times bestselling author. Marie Vincent, Mad Ford, we grow and sell organic and natural herbal teas from our website. Laurie, mindful health coach, helping busy working women achieve stubborn weight loss and turning to where they are meant to be. Britton Enterprises, um, Okay, no surgical hair replacement, attorney, 42 years. Wow, amazing, Alan. Health coach, three years. Um, okay, so uh, Emery has been doing um, training people in public speaking and getting people stage ready and interview ready. Um, from I Speak Clearly, Jojo Concepts, Privacy, our monitor, oh. Okay, no problem. Okay, so we have people here in different levels of, um, you know, as far as being business for a long, long time and people that are just starting. So let me get started here. Just give me a moment here to get my slides up. So if you never met me before, um, uh, you know, let me get this out of the way. My accent is from Brazil. <laughs> Um, I speak Brazilian Portuguese, although I've been here for many, many years. I can't get rid of my accent. So if you can't understand what I'm saying, just ask me. I'm sorry, sometimes I mispronounce things. I still do. Um, but um, here we go. My slides. And let me minimize this. Okay, I'm not going to be able to see the chat during the presentation. We're going to try to be very mindful of your time and do this as fast as possible. So Elizabeth, you can help me out monitoring, that would be wonderful. So today we're gonna to talk about how to leverage photography to build your personal brand or your brand online. So this presentation is good either if you have a personal brand or if you don't, um, and maybe why you should have a personal brand even if you work for a corporate or a company. So I'm Carolina Luna, I'm a personal branding photographer consultant here in New York. I'm a photographer for over 20 years. I'm gonna help you to shine brighter, attract your audience and make an impact. Um, if you have, um, make sure also your microphone is muted during the presentation. And if you have any questions, just raise your hand. What I'm gonna start with here is 
just going over what's brand and branding because a lot of people get confused. But well, we're gonna simplify marketing for you today. Brand and branding. So what's the difference? So when you think about somebody you know or a brand you know, what comes to mind? Let's say, for example, Apple. What comes to mind when you think of Apple? You think about innovation, you think about uh, the uh, like very clean aesthetics and design, bold messaging. You think about uh, being in the forefront of technology and all kinds of things, right? You think about consumers that are early adopters. This just came to my mind, right? So brand is the impression, is the intangible things that you think about somebody or a brand. So is a set of perceptions, ideas, and feelings about a product, a service, or a person. So guys, you are a walking brand. If I were to think about one of you that I know personally, I would describe you, right? Oh, um, this person so and so and so, and, and the personality, and maybe the way they dress, and their uh, appearance and descriptions, right? So that's a brand. A brand is the set of impressions um, about a product, service, or person. Now, branding is how you're going to shape that perception. So those are now the tangible expressions of your brand. So will be your your logo, your colors, your images, your typography, even the voice that you choose, right? All those things that you uh, choose to do so people will have the perception about your product or service or yourself. Um, I'm not, as, as I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm gonna try not to be stuck on the marketing part so we can move forward to the photography, but guys, I'm gonna break some news here. You are your brand, whether you want it to be a brand or not, but you are a brand, walking, talking uh, brand. <laughs> and um, the brand photography is really important for you to, again, mold that perception. Uh, it's one of the marketing tools. It's not the only tool that you're gonna use to promote your business or yourself, but it's one of the most important tools. Of course, there's video, there's um, written pieces, uh, there's advert. There's so many ways that you can uh, create the experience of your brand. However, photography is in the top, is in the top. Um, I hate to say, but video is getting up there, like it's becoming even more important than photography. But you need um, all these things to promote your business. And photography to uh, promote your business. Uh, we'll call it brand photography, is curated to support your brand's goals. It's not just any random photography or pretty photography, okay? It's best when you align with what you wanted to, um, mo how you wanted to mold the perception. Photography, when you align that with your copy, with your words, you know, how you communicate uh, with your clients, it helps to tell stories. So if you pair a photography with the, uh, the mood of your, the tone of your copy or the message you're conveying, it's even more impactful, right? Now you're creating a dimensional experience. It goes hand in hand with your marketing, of course. You can customize website sections and landing pages and promotional materials. You can create one of a kind posts. So they're not gonna be just templated posts anymore. When you add your photography, it becomes very, very unique. And also you can have um, your marketing collateral, can have your photos in your business cards, in many printouts. Um, you can have uh, your publicity and press kits ready to go. If somebody wants to interview you, promote you in a newspaper, in a magazine, if you're gonna be featured, you can have all that going um, ready to go, professional photo, right? This at your fingertips and also customize your ad campaigns. It's a lot more personal. So you probably know that when you are a business, right? Uh, it's important also for you to think about how you want it to be perceived by your audience. Just like people, brands have personalities. So if your company has, um, it was a person, 
If your company was a person, who would it be? Um, who would she or he act, talk and dress? So here I have my client, Clarissa. She's a doctor. She's from um, New Jersey. She came all the way here to have a photo shoot with me. And in the studio, I asked her, uh, Dr. Larissa, how would you like to feel during a photo shoot? She said, I wanted to appear to my ideal client that I'm confident. Um, I want my brand to be feminine and approachable. You know, because there's also a stigma, doctors can be cold. Dr. Larissa didn't want to appear that way. And uh, we introduced um, different sides of Dr. Larissa also in her photo shoot. So um, here is just some of the clothing that she looked, uh, she brought in to look approachable, feminine, and look confident. And then it goes with the posing as well. So think about it. I want you to make some notes. How would you like to be perceived by your audience? And I, you know, hopefully when you can take some time aside, journal about those things, think about it. Be conscious about how you present yourself. When you go to a networking event, um, you know, dress your best. You know, you are representing your business. So a personal brand, according, I just got my hands on a huge research paper here from the Brand Builders, which is a company that specializes in building brands and personal brands nonetheless. And um, according to the research, um, you know, this is what came up when people ask, what is a personal brand? This is what people responded, that a personal brand is not what you do, is who you are. So guys, this is super important information here. So who you are and your brand is gonna be as authentic as you are. So this is really something. So you have to be conscious how you show up in the world, right? When you have a brand. And now, um, not only it's important how you look, but how you talk, right? Um, are you more corporate or are you casual? Um, are you the kind of person that, you know, um, you know, your voice and how you look should kind of match, right? Um, so how do you want it to sound to your audience is going to be kind of how you want it to appear to your audience. So if you're corporate, you're going to have that language. If you're a little more casual, you're going to speak in a more colloquial way. Um, are you the kind of person that's straight to the point or are you a little more, you know, relax and use slangs? Um, so what's your voice and tone when you are, uh, you know, putting your content out there? Are you caring, cheerful, edgy, sophisticated? What kind of brand are you? There's some really great brand, brand archetypes uh, quizzes online, and I want you guys to write this down and look for some of them. It's called, um, just Google brand archetype quiz and find out what kind of brand you are because that will give you the intel and also the vocabulary for you to uh, show up authentically in a way that matches who you are. It matches, it, it's just, it's, it's such precious information for you to create um, all your branding material. Um, the other thing that you can search online and put a tip over here, search for brand and voice chart example. Google that as well. And, um, you know, get an idea how you're going to be writing your content and sounding to your audience. And another thing that's super, super important here, I have a little Yoda there for a reason. I want you guys to think about this. Yoda is the wise man from Star Wars, and he is the guide or the sage who guides Luke Skywalker, right? So although um, he's a pretty badass, right? A Yoda, um, he is making Luke Skywalker the hero. And I want you guys to position yourself like Yoda in your business. You're the wise um, brand uh, who has uh, something of value and knowledge to offer your clients. 
but your clients, your brand is not about you. It's about the people you help. So when you show up to give out content, to, to create content, it is important that you remember there. The brand is about you, but it's not about you. The brand is about giving value to your audience. So you make it about them, not about you. You show up as an act of service, not as an act of vanity. That's really, really important. You guys should write it down. Show up as an act of service, not as an act of vanity. Because a lot of us, we shy away from showing up online. We don't want it to appear vain, right? A lot of times we give excuses not to show up. But when we don't show up, what, what's happening, when, and especially when we don't show up authentically, we're just show up, showing up to show up. Um, we're missing the opportunity to connect with people that really need our services and products and messages. Not everybody here is gonna be showing up to sell things, to sell actual products. You might be showing up to sell a service. You might be showing up to, to um, inspire people, right? But the most people that are consuming um, information online, they're bombarded. They're looking for brands that inspire them and give them values. So when you show up, think about what do my audience, tune in, what does my audience need to hear from me today? What are they needing to learn from me? What are they needing to, um, you know, just hear, just to feel good or to get inspired or to improve their life? How can you give value? So think about for a rule of thumb, for every three, four posts that you post, three of them you give and one you ask. Three gives, one ask. That's a pretty good rule of thumb. So give, give, give more than ask and take. Okay, when you show up to give, people value you more. Everybody gets kind of turned off when you're asking and you're selling. And, you know, it's not that people don't want to buy from you. They don't just want it to be shoved on the face, buy, buy, buy. So let's, you know, first of all, create the mindset and the environment about social media and posting and promoting a business. We're going to show up as an act of service we're going to make it about our clients, make them our, the hero of the story, not us the hero of the story. We're going to give value. We're going to build by showing up and sharing our knowledge. We're going to build the know, like, and trust factor. And, and by showing, your showing up authentically, you're going to start differentiate yourself from the competitors because there's no one like you. There's no one like you. You have a set of unique uh, qualities. You have your own life journey and experience. So nobody is like you. If they try to copy you, they're going to be the second best, maybe the fifth best, but no one's going to be like you. And even though you're speaking or selling something that's being done and it's being heard before, but when it comes through your voice and through your filter, through your view of the world, through your experience, the message becomes unique. And that's what's important about. Show up and speak up. And even if your content is not perfect, don't be caught up on that. Just show up and show up and honing your style, honing your, the way you present your information. The more you show up, the more you practice. And then you start getting better and better and better. Nothing likes practice. Until you become the go-to expert in your niche of expertise. And in today's marketing, what's important is to tell stories. And what we're going to learn today here is to tell stories via photography. So marketing is not about the stuff that uh, about the stuff that you make anymore. It's about the stories that you tell. This guy Seth Godin is a marketing genius. He has many books in marketing. If you're not look him up, awesome research uh, res uh, resource. So for those guys, 
uh, the, here in this presentation that really like facts. Here, um, I have some for you. Um, according to the research that I just got my hands on, millennials and Gen Z place an unexpectedly high emphasis on personal branding, determining what they buy, where they work, who they listen to, who they recommend, who they hire, who they vote for, and even who they date. They, it's, that's crazy information, guys. Imagine that now this generation, the millennials who are gonna be leading our country in, you know, they're ready, <laughs> um, but who are gonna be, you know, the decision makers, um, you know, in a few years from now, right? Uh, following the Gen Zs, uh, we are, these are the people that are valuing more and more why you do what you do rather than what do you do? They're valuing more, um, you know, I am gonna endorse a product, a service or an idea if we have similar values. I'm gonna buy from companies that I like and I, I, I actually um, endorse the CEOs of the company. Those are the, uh, the facts now coming from this research. So 74% of all Americans say that they're more likely to trust someone who has established personal brand. So one reason why you should have one. Um, and again, guys, if you work for a company, let's say you're a realtor and you work for a established realty company, but you are the individual represent, uh, you are like an ambassador for the company. You know, I'll give you an example. I have a lot of uh, realtors that come from me from Douglas Elliman. They have a super amazing marketing department where they give uh, their realtors websites and they have a marketing department that gives them uh, graphics, you know, they design graphics and do super amazing support. Um, you know that um, th these, um, they treat their employees like ambassadors for their company. And that's the trend right now. And also um, the, the millennials believe, according to their research, that um, companies, uh, corporations should be teaching their employees how to build their personal brand. Another thing about personal brand um, is that, um, in fact, uh, when you think of, for example, Tesla, you, oops, when you think about Tesla, you think thinking about Elon Musk, right? When you think about Amazon, who comes to mind? Jeff Bezos. When you think about Virgin Airlines, you think about Richard Branson. So, and why do you endorse those companies? Because you know uh, how the CEOs think. You know that they're behind the decisions of the company. They are the drivers of the company. Um, their, their, their ideas matter, right? Because that will, uh, stirs the company in a certain direction. So guys, you know, personal branding is gonna be it. Think about building one if you don't have one. And, and why visibility matters? 80% um, of people believe that authenticity of content is the most influential factor in the consumer's decision to become a follower of a brand. There's 94% more article views compared to articles without images. Imagine, that's a huge difference. Also, adding a photo can improve recollection by 65%. People tend to forget content in about three days, but when you add a photograph that improves by 65%, that's huge. And engagement on Facebook is 352% more than with when you post only text without photographs or images. And a um, few more things here, quality. Quality of your images. 60% of consumers say that the quality of a product is uh, a product, a quality of an image is very important in selecting and purchasing the product. And lastly, 
you know, when people are using Google and doing their local searches, consumers are 60% more likely to consider or contact a business that has an, an image show up in their local searches. Um, I myself, when I go on Google and I wanted to search on something, I click on images and I wanted to see uh, what's happening there. I'm, I'm sure, you know, kind of similar. Now, the thing that's most important, we're talking about creating all these contents, building a personal brand, understanding some facts about, you know, the importance of our being visible. But guys, who are you showing up for? Who is that that you're creating content for? Who is your ideal client? Without knowing who your ideal client is, you speak into a void. And something really, really important is that the knowing is specifically who you serve, it's gonna help you in many ways. You're gonna show up where they are. That's marketing. Marketing simply is putting a product, service, or idea in front of those people that are looking for it and putting that stuff in front of your idea clients. If you don't know where your clients are, you're wasting time, money, and energy, right? But now when you know your ideal clients, you understand their behavior, you know where they are, you know when they hang out online. Now you have something. Now you have more opportunity. So uh, might as well do it right. Understand your ideal clients. So you create stories and content that resonate with them. Remember, tune in what your clients need to hear from you. Create relationships that last. Find out their behaviors, needs, and how to solve them. People want their problems to be solved. That's why they're hiring you. Find out where to market your brand. Find what ticks them, you know? And, you know, it's so important today to talk about your values. And people are bonding with brands because of they have similar values and culture and, and think the same. You know, it's building a community these days. You speak to your ideal client in a way that will empower them to choose you over your competitors. The way, the way to do that is not about talking how great uh, what you do is, but you want to build a trust, um, you want to make the, their life easier, and you want to help them. You show up like helping, helping, helping. Show up as an actual service. It's super, super important. Now I'm gonna introduce my friend here. Her name is Tiffany. Oops. Take a sip of water here. Oh. So my friend here is Tiffany. And um, she worked in the corporate world in a big marketing and advertising agency. She worked with huge brands like Stoli and, you know, FedEx, and she worked a lot. She worked, not only she worked, she worked in a metropolitan area, but then she had to travel about an hour back home where she had her husband, her family, her pup. And between working a lot and commuting and then having the family life, uh, and doing that for many years, she kind of got burned out. She got a little burned. Let me actually stop sharing for a second. Oops. Oh. So uh, she got kind of burned. Hi, everybody. <laughs> My name. Oh, is everything okay? So uh, my friend, um, she actually had an adrenal fatigue. She worked so, you know, it was intense. It was a lot of pressure. And, and she decided to take a back seat a little bit and take care of her health and open her own business as a, um, a branding consultant. And after that, um, you know, she started growing her brand. Um, and um, the 
cool thing about Tiffany and then she started building a brand and a following and she's now uh, working with huge brands. Um, and here, my friends, um, that's Tiffany again. And Tiffany was actually, uh, she is a real client of mine, but she was a product of my ideal client avatar that I have created. Uh, I'm showing you this here uh, for you guys to think about how to create your own avatar. Because um, again, when you speak to everybody, you speak to no one. When you think of your avatar, and when you think about your services, you're probably thinking, Carolina, I can't just talk to one person. I can't help anybody. If I ask you, who is your ideal client? I can't help anybody. My service is good for everybody. But I want you to think differently, okay? Because again, when you're speaking to everybody, you get lost in the, in the business, in the busyness of things. When you speak more specifically to one avatar, not only you're gonna make your content creation much easier, but then you're gonna be able to be more specific about your clients' um, internal struggles, their psychographics, they, everything that goes on in their mind. And then you, it's gonna be easier to learn how you can solve their problems. You start putting out content to help that uh, particular avatar. And what's gonna happen, you're gonna attract other people in the spectrum, people that are before that avatar or ahead of that avatar. But it's important for you to think about this concept. The riches are in the niches. The more specific you are, the more you're going to be able to position yourself as an expert, as an authority. Um, you're also going to be honing in and attracting more ideal clients. Think about your business model right now that you serve everybody. How many people there are not so much fun to work with or not so idea and ideal um, come to you for business? Now, wouldn't that be nice to create in your, even in your mind, a super ideal client that you wanted to attract more of? Think of a client that you had in the past that was wonderful to work with and create journal about it and create something like this. So, Again, when you sit down to create content, when you write copy for your website, you can write to her or to him specifically. Put that content geared to that person and then you're gonna start attracting more similar people. It's okay to repel people too in business, okay? Um, it's okay to not be for everyone. It's actually a good thing. It makes you more unique, it makes you stand out, and you may, you know, you, that's what you want. You don't want it to be like everybody. Um, being a one-of-a-kind business, serving a specific avatar, basically uh, eliminates competition. So here's a good way for you to start doing that. I created my um, avatar. I named her Ovi Welma. So, um, and I attract Tiffany and other uh, amazing entrepreneurs. Her age is 35 to 55. I gave her an income, an occupation. She is a coach to high achieving heart center entrepreneurs. She has success and is ready to scale. Good idea of the direction that she wants to go, but needs assurance. Creativity and perspective may be lacking to piece together her personal brand in a way that's more authentic, matches her personality and looks more contemporary. What does uh, she desire? Someone who understands her business vision and helps it to bring full circle. She seeks clarity, precision, structure, and support. She wants to be the receiver of the experience and have a fun experience. Someone whom she can trust and get their blind spot. Someone who will help them to reconnect with their why. Now, what's important, um, the problems, right? What's holding her back? She's overcommitted and fully booked and has had photo shoot experiences, bad photo shoot experiences before. She's got okay photos, but they don't reflect her brand. She's planning to do a whole new website since the current one no longer reflects the evolution of her business. Now what? She wants a hassle-free experience to be sure her time and money is well invested. 
and that the final results going hand in hand for branding goals, support her brand positioning and her big vision. She wants the photos to give it a high-end feel and show the essence of her brand. And what's going on in her mind? It shouldn't be that hard to get my photos done. And as a branding herself, as a coach, it's hard to see the label from inside the bottle. I need someone who knows branding. So that's my ideal client here. I created this and I attract my ideal clients because when I show up and create content, I speak to that avatar. So that, does it make sense to you guys? I wanted to hear some feedback. I don't want it to be just a talking head here, although, you know, it tends to be that way. But how are you guys doing? Give me a, am I on track here? Oh my, I mean, uh, let's see if any of the attendees have something to say, but personally, I mean, just this slide is worth everything. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I thought everything has been great so far, but this is like just blowing my mind. So. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Let me see how I can get back here to my uh, presentation. Okay. All right. So let's shake it off a little bit too. All right, guys, so let's get to the photography part. I think you're here for it. Um, but again, let's build your avatar. This, if you wanted to take um, you know, a screenshot of this, I encourage you to do that right now uh, and start sit with this uh, concept. And um, I wanted to really work on your avatar. That's the most important thing you can do right now. Forget about the logo, the colors, the fonts. This is more important than that to start honing in um, your marketing messaging and then you can figure out the visuals afterwards. And um, you need to start with your avatar. So a couple of questions here to get you started. The demographics, where does she live? Is it in a big city, a small town, rural area? Name the city, get specific. How old is your client? What's her mar marital status? How much does your client earn in a year? What are your client's hobbies? How does she uh, or he spend her time? And psychographics, what are the concerns, problems that they face and how can you offer a solution to them? And there's a beautiful place to start to online. Um, you can go to um, a brand story, uh, story brand, sorry, story brand. It's a book by Donald Miller. He's a huge marketer, super famous in the marketing and branding industry. Um, and he has a website where you can actually do the client journey as a seven step journey based on the, um, it's kind of the uh, concept of the uh, hero's journey. So again, it's positioning you, the Yoda and the client as the uh, Luke Skywalker. So remember these guys, these are the most important things. When you speak to everyone, you speak to no one. The riches are in the niches. Again, the more specific you are about the people and the niche you wanted to serve, the more you can actually be an expert in that field, the more you can charge actually, because then you are an expert on authority and speak to the one avatar. Focus on the psychographics, okay? The psychological part. So now we're gonna to get to some real uh, clients here. Meet Lauren. Lauren, as you can tell, she has a very welcoming, warm personality. She's a bubbly girl. And while she was sitting on the table for Thanksgiving with her family, her husband, her kids, stepkids, and her father, mom, and siblings, uh, her father who owned this Pietro's Pizzeria uh, said, I'm closing the business. I can't wait to board the place up. Lauren, she was livid. She said, what? 
Claus. You don't know Claus the place? That was grandpa's place. So um, Pietro's was her grandfather and her uh, father was an accountant and he inherited the business after dad passed away. Um, he really didn't care for the business that much. You know, it was kind of landed on his lap. That was not what he wanted to do. So he kind of pushed with the belly, you know? Um, and he didn't really do a great job running the business. The place was rent down. So he was happy to board it up, but Lauren, she grew up folding boxes there and spending time in the restaurant and she had such fond memories. So she didn't want to see the place being closed. She left her corporate job as a property manager and her and her husband rebuilt the business. And the place is booming, booming right now. But part of the fact that the place is booming is her energy. People's reviews about the place is like, oh, the owner's energy is amazing. And she has this bubbly personality. She come and talk to the client. She has these amazing ideas. So she came to me to include the personal brand and to add her personality into the business because that's one of the reasons why the place is being so successful. So we decided to tell stories with, uh, with the photography. So she's coming from corporates and you know she, she's like a welcoming picture here. That's her dad and you know, although they fight a lot, they have their peaceful moments, they, they have conflicts of ideas and interests, you know, and we took photos of her folding boxes, we styled her so to match her colors a little bit, you see that she has a lot of reds in there in her outfit, and um, she was creating also pizza kit to sell for families to do their pizza at home. So we included some photos with her family and her house and her kitchen with the, the kits that she sells and, and showing the family um, the importance of a traditional family for her and doing things as family. So that's Lauren's story. And she does a wonderful uh, job on her Instagram. She makes a photos of the food she photo she tells stories about her brand and things like that and gets people excited and wanting to know what's next you know and people seeing the progress of the place and it's just really nice to see even a brick and mortar business can add a personal brand into their business model oh and her husband and her working together of course and this is Michelle, and Michelle has two brands. Um, she is a holistic brand, uh, holistic coach. Um, she talks about uh, nutrition and fitness. And uh, what we did here, we actually went to an Airbnb, and we had, um, you know, burning the food, and and we wanted to convey her healthy lifestyle. It's so important for people that see the way you live makes a big difference on how they believe on what you do, you know? Um, so it's important to show your personal side. So convey what you do through your photographs. And here are some of the variety that we uh, showed in Michelle's photo shoot. You know, journaling is part of her routine, reading, you know, just being out and about. You see, she's wearing different outfits. We did this all in one day, but she has now a folder full of content for the whole year, basically, or six months. And she has gorgeous photos to customize her website and tell her story in Covey, how she lives and how she supports her lifestyle, healthy living. This is Colleen. And you know what he does? He's an attorney. He does... Uh, um, state like uh states um yeah he helps families uh, to write their state and uh, yeah he's an amazing guy he does not you can see he's not the typical looking attorney so he cannot show up um you know like traditional he's not traditional at all he's a guy who he does a uh, things very differently. He's very caring, heart center, 
um, he has a different approach. So he wanted to show that he's also artistic, he's very unique. Um, he's into spirituality and mysticism. He also hosts men's circles, uh, men empowerment circles. So here we show different expressions and different things to convey the different men archetypal energies that he teaches in his uh, men's circles. This was only like an hour photo shoot, by the way, but he have a lot of more photographs. Now this is, um, one of my favorite people. Um, I went to California to photograph them. They have a company that does uh, computer components and they sell cables for um, multi, like Verizon and for different companies like that. So they wanted to humanize their business a little bit because they are the CEOs and they're also a couple. So that's Val and Andy. And what we did, we did some corporate looking shoots and behind the scenes of them inspecting their cables and having meetings, etc. But we also did some lifestyle in California, you know, showing like, you know, Val's, her Mustang and some fun things about Val and in their, you know, not only working together, but having a life together, you know, being out and about. So that's a great way to humanize your business, you know? So you're not just a boring business doing the traditional things. You also, you, there's a heart and there's a human behind your brand. This is Parisa. She works for Douglas Elliman, but she has, of course, her own website and brand. Oh, what happened there? Oops, let's see what happened. I got a blank. There we go. So uh, for Parisa here, we had the lifestyle photo shoot where she had um, a listing that was just out in the market, it was freshly painted and renovated. And we decided that that was going to be a great place to do a photo shoot. So, you know, um, when you look at this, you know, it's pretty much like a realtor go prepare, get the flowers ready, get the place, make sure it's all nice and clean and welcoming. She has a folder to show all the specs of the house. She has her laptop, she's taking calls, you know, she's like walking through the house with you. And, and we have some, the pointing photo there is always great for um, if creating graphics, if you're pointing to a house that you sold, you know. So that's Parisa. We're humanizing her as a realtor. And this is a, a business coach. She's here from Long Island. Her name is Nancy Genzo Koffer. Um, she heavily uses her photo on her social media. So I, I absolutely invite you to go check out her feed. You're going to see her reusing the photos over and over, and she repurposed them in camp. She does like canvas uh, graphics. So she can strip the background and also have the photos reused with um, her branding, which is really, really great. Um, she has a huge following. Uh, she specializes in interior designers. So here's just a couple of samples of her face, uh, her Instagram feed. Again, you're gonna see some of the photos over and over and over, but this is where those pointing uh, pictures what we call the call to action when you direct a viewer to look at something on uh, you know with your either pointing or looking in that direction so uh she used the one of the photos that we had the today photo shoot for her one day just at the studio because she's also body language trainer and she needed multiple expressions to um to teach in her workshops you know to uh, show, teach body language and expression. Um, and here are just a few ways to use the photographs in your social media. Um, you know, it's worth going to check it out. Uh, she has also the photos on her website. This is Dr. Larissa again, and we photographed Dr. Larissa not only as a professional polished um, doctor and and she's not just a traditional doctor by the way she is a um how you call it uh not a holistic doctor but a doctor that's um 
functional medicine doctor. Um, she, her story is that, you know, she had a problem, somebody in her family that traditional medicine failed. So she lives a very healthy lifestyle and her hobby is to go dancing salsa. She takes salsa lessons, so we incorporate that into her branding as well. So share things that you do that bring you joy. You know, people wanted to see that you're living a good life. They wanted to get inspired by you. They wanted to be like, oh, I, I can, you know, they can live vicariously through you perhaps, or they get inspired to live just like you or do some of the things, or even if they're not gonna do it, um, they feel, oh, I, I really like the person because she does that or he does that. And also at the office, this is a, um, a company um, that um, here they're business partners and they teach um, video recording for entrepreneurs so people to show up in video. Uh, so here they have their meetings, their briefings, and they're working together, recording themselves. This is Clockwise Production if you wanted to ch check out Nina. Hi, and this is one of my favorite guys. He is not the typical entrepreneur. Now, um, this is Luke Orleto, and he came here from Tennessee to have a two-day photo shoot with me. Um, he had one day for himself and his uh, partner, uh, Yogi. Um, uh, she had a photo shoot the second day with me. So he is a world travel uh, he was a chiropractor doctor who became one of those uh, really soft after speakers. Uh, he teaches high performance. So because he is one of those tie-dye guys, you know, and he takes people on retreats to swim with dolphins and it's their transformational retreats in part of people like walk on fire, jump from airplanes, all kinds. He's an adventurer. Um, he didn't really... Um, Actually, um, he doesn't dress up. You know, he walks around with a tie dye he's a, and flip flops. He's a very simple guy. But we had to polish up a little bit for the photo shoot because he's also a speaker. So we did all of this in the studio. He's also a, mar a martial artist, black belt. He is a healer, hands on healer. He's a chiropractor. His work is super powerful. Think about Joe Dispenza. If you know Joe Dispenza, he's at the level of Joe Dispenza. He has many organizations that he supports. He is the tie dye is one of them. Um, so he's an exceptional, amazing human being. He has retreats now in his 94 acre property in Tennessee. Okay, this is an artist from Katona, upstate New York. And um, she teaches other artists how to be profitable online. She's a, an artist and a coach. Her name is Sammy Kaplan. Her thing is she loves going to Montauk. She wants to settle in Montauk, uh, although she lives upstate New York. So we had to include Montauk in her photo shoots. We had two day photo shoots, one in her studio in Katona. And the other day we went to my studio and we went, we end up in Montauk. Um, so also, you know, see here books that you endorse and brands that you endorse. You can always um, post that on your social media and tag the brands. It gives them a shout out, it shows support and also can help you get visibility on their feed. This is Kelly Schaufer. She is a, uh, kind of a gospel coach. She teaches fitness and gospel. Um, it's called Revelation Fitness. So she has a Bible in her hand. We went in nature and Kelly, she teaches people how to become healthier, but conscious uh, and use the power of uh, God to get through the challenges of losing weight and in life. And a big part of her, a big part of uh, Kelly's uh, struggles prior to becoming a health coach, she was very obese and she has a sugar dish addiction. So she struggled with that. So we incorporated, uh, you know, the candy uh, and the sugar in there and the struggles, you know, so you can 
Um, tell stories with your photograph. And Kelly did a phenomenal job writing posts that so going so perfectly with her photographs. So it's a skill that you develop over time. Combining your photos with your copy, it's a skill that it has to be practiced and developed. And the better you do that, the more you're gonna create connection with your following. Here's Josiah, he's a personal trainer who's also a box, into boxing. So we were in a boxing in a MMA cage. Um, so Josiah didn't want to show up as a fit model, although he's in um, impeccable shape. He didn't want it to be just showing up as all about him. He wanted to convey that, um, you know, it's about the experience he has. And his private uh, gym is in his house in kind of a basement setup. So it's called Underground Games. So this kind of reflects the feeling of the underground experience. So everyone has their one of a kind fingerprint signature and life purpose. I wanted to think, what's your life purpose? What is your signature? And what's your one of a kind way to show up? And here's just my own behind the scene experience. You can see my short hair, this was done three years ago. Um, but that's a way that I have too, to show up what it feels like to working with me behind the scenes, you know, with my clients. And by the way, if you're hanging in here, um, I have some special gifts. If you stay to the end, I'm going to also give you some discounts and a free brand consultation. And this is my information. If you wanted to take a snapshot with your phone, just to have that um, to follow up later on. OK, so now, where do you start? Before I, um, let me just check the time because I tend to kind of forget about the time I get engorged in, a, in the, the presentation, not engorged, but immersed, <laughs> sorry about my wording. Uh, so it's, it's 10 right now. How, uh, Elizabeth, how are we doing? We're good. If you have a little more time. Okay, um, so everybody's good? Because now I'm going to show you how to get started to thinking about your own um, branding photos. Okay, how are you going to start planning? Okay, so best practices, you can always take your, it's again, it's important to have a variety in your social media uh, mix. If you're doing Instagram or if you're doing LinkedIn, again, think about your ideal clients and what do they want to hear from you. But these are the things you're going to have to have some videos, some professional photos, some cell phone photos that you do on your own, some graphics, some things to inspire your audience. But if you're going to have a photo shoot, I suggest you plan with a professional branding photographer because the cropping is different. The concept is different. Again, you're not just looking for pretty photographs. You're going to strategize. You're gonna talk about your branding goals. You're gonna talk about your ideal clients and a regular photographer is not gonna give you the kind of service. They're gonna simply show up and take photos of you. But if you want it to be more specific and you want it to get the most for your brand, if you want it to get aligned with your brand, hire a personal branding photographer. And be careful because a lot of people are saying, I'm a brand photographer, but they don't do any of the strategy with you. Make an inventory of all the places you'll be using your photographs, like your website sections. Um, it's gonna be on your about page. Uh, it's gonna be in your origin story. It's, is it gonna be throughout your services? Um, in your homepage, you should have a hero photo of yourself. The hero photo is the first photo in your website, uh, in the first section of your website. So people land on the homepage, right? they're going to see your name and they should see your face to match. You start creating the know, like, and trust factor through your homepage experience where people are scrolling down, they're skimming the information, but they're visual. They're seeing your photographs over and over. By the end of the scrolling, they're going to be familiar with you already. They're going to say, oh, I feel comfortable. I like, I know I've seen the person over and over. And you start creating that familiarity. 
think of the smaller stories that can help you support the major marketing pieces, okay? So, um, for example, um, you know, like Lauren, you know, the, the client with the pizzeria. She wanted to show up and become visible because people are going there because of her, of course, the great food that she's creating, her visionary concepts. Um, but think about like we, we broke down a little bit. We involved her dad in the story, you know, to show that, to show that emotion, to show the conflict, to show, you know, okay, now we are together. We're working on this together. Um, so think what are the things that you can tell about your business that you can break down a little bit. Allow um, adequate time to prepare for your wardrobe and logistics. If your budget allows, hire a stylist. Yeah, when you have a photo shoot, you want it to be showing up, um, let's say at your best version, right? Even if you are not there in your business yet, you can do a little bit of love attraction. Uh, you wanted to start showing up the way you want it to be, okay? Do, the way you want it to be perceived. So invest in your clothing. If you, if you show up thrifty, you know, you're gonna <laughs> up level your look, up level. Again, you're walking representation of yourself when you go networking, when you show up, when you go, even when you go food shopping, always present yourself for the best. And for your photo shoots, you should be the same. You're gonna show up in your best hair day for your show, photo shoot. If you can style yourself, do it. Get professional hair and makeup. You don't want it to look like, um, you, not you, you want it to be as, as close as possible to you, but more polished. So invest, invest in your clothing, maybe you have a capsule wardrobe, you can pull over and over for your professional, uh, pres um, when you show up in a Zoom meeting, when you show up with a client, you already have an outfit kind of ready to go that represents your brand. And create a mood board and share with your photographer and keep it also share with your team that's designing your branding, that's designing your website. So it's so important for people to be in the same vision and communicating and, and communicating visually is even easier to understand each other. Include as much variety as possible, um, having different expressions, different angles, cropping styles in each scene that you're gonna be visiting for your photo shoot. And a very important again, Personal branding photos, they're cropped specifically for website sections and for social media. You know, face, um, not Facebook, but Instagram is square. If you crop the photos a certain way, they're not gonna be, you know, good enough, you know, to crop uh, without chopping limbs or chopping in a, in a weird way. But um, the personal branding webs, uh, website photos, those are super, super strategic. You wanted to have uh, the rules of third applied and have like negative space, meaning I'm going to show you some examples so you know what I'm talking about. But negative space is when you have a person more on the side and you have blank space on the other side. And that's great to write copy over the blank space. And the more consider this too. Are you going to have a one hour photo shoot? Are you going to have a half day photo shoot or a whole day photo shoot? Because the more time you have with your photographer, the more variety you're going to be able to have. You're going to be able to change more outfits so it doesn't look like you're getting all your photos done in one day. As adults, you're not going to expect to change much. Like children change, right? When they have a toddler, they grow so fast and change. But we as adults, we don't change that much. Maybe your hair grows a little bit and you change your hairstyle. But why not create in one day content for six months ahead. That's what branding photography does for you. You busy people, you have to run your business. You don't have time to keep dressing up and putting makeup and do your hair every day and figure out well, how you're gonna show up for you know your certain things. Imagine if you have a folder full of photographs at your access, but you can even, if you have a team, you can delegate that. And you don't have to think about it for many months to come. You can just focus on your zone of genius, which is to, you know, create 
ideas, services, service your clients and do other more important things. And this is where you should start the mood board. I'm thinking you're all familiar with Pinterest and if you're not, you just have to jump on. Create a collage on Pinterest and you can either do all in one board or you can create separate boards for separate things. What you're gonna add there is gonna be to give you like a visual cue of where you're gonna go with your photo shoot or with your branding. So you can put industry inspiration, poses and photos that you like, wardrobe ideas, so you can go find something similar or you get starting point. Um, the kind of locations that you want to go, the kind of a color palette, story ideas and crops, etc. This is a great starting point. Now we're gonna brainstorm also, right? Oh, let me see if I can move this. Okay. So what we wanted to do is to figure out, uh, you know, of course, um, you wanted to show the behind the scenes of your work, but people wanted to know who you are. Who is this person I'm going to be doing business with? What kind of person this is? You know, what do they do when they're not working? And by showing that personal side of you, you become more relatable. And that's why it's important to show a little bit of your uh, other side. So guys, you are multidimensional. You, you are not just one thing. You, you might be a parent. You might be... Uh, like uh, you might be part of an organization that you donate time you might be you know have you might have hobbies and have a pet or whatever that is you might have a lifestyle that's really cool you wanted to show everything that's cool about you so you have a craft maybe you might incorporate your family uh, you with your team or with your clients show your place that you work, show some behind the scenes, pull off the curtain. You know, do you have a spiritual practice? Um, are you into fitness? You have a hobby, you have a prized possession. You know, show up one day, oh, this is my prized possession. And this is why it's important and has meaning to me. You know, you never know. You strike a chord on people's hearts. And think about location. Are you gonna do a studio photo shoot? That's my studio, by the way. And or are you going to uh, be in your home? You're gonna be uh, going to nature in a park. There's so many different options. So where are you gonna get started? Are you gonna be in nature? Are you gonna be in a um, uh, urban area? Are you gonna be like here, for example, I had a surf uh, band a duo that we went to Coney Island. Uh, they're surf, like they do surf tunes, you know, rock, surf rock, I think it is. Uh, so we ended up in Coney Island, which made sense for their brand. So think uh, maybe you might want to rent, if you don't have a pretty space to go to, you might want to consider renting um, an Airbnb or a boutique hotel. You could be at the gym, you know. Again, if you have more time with your photographer, that means you have to cover many locations. My photo shoots are for branding, personal branding. It's half day or all day photo shoots. And my lifestyle photo shoots, which, which is more like a, something quick that doesn't require as much planning, is either an hour, an hour and a half. So what kind of props are you gonna bring? Singer, here in my studio, we conveyed that we were in a recording studio. She had uh, the headset and the microphone. You know, you're doing business wherever you are 24 seven. Here, you're on the phone, you're out and about, but you on the phone. The laptop, it seems like every entrepreneur wants to do the laptop thing these days. Well, yeah, it's part of their business, well, why not? 
if you here, for example, uh, if you are a minister, you want to have your garment, you know, that photo says it all. I don't have to tell much, you know, like I look at the photo and I know what she does. The guy with the guitar, well, he's a musician. This girl here um, had the accessory. Here are you doing a flower arrangement. You want to bring food, a book, some accessories, uh, beverage, whatever, you know, hats, whatever makes sense for your brand. Wardrobe is really, really important. That's my Thai guy man here. So, you know, you want to show up a little more formal. Remember your language, right? Also, um, you wanted to match your voice, your brand tone and everything. So um, if you are here a doctor, that's pretty much, you know, very professional look as she shows up to work. This guy here is a realtor. Um, if you are a bohemian brand, you're going to show up different. If you are a uh, rocker, you know, you're going to probably have jeans, a white shirt and a leather jacket. You know, who knows? So you have to think about it. What is it about your brand? How you want to show up and commit to that look. That's really important. Now, super important to hear, guys. You want to have one outstanding headshot and you want it to be consistent in all your touch points of your marketing, meaning on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, you're gonna use the same headshot. If you have a social profile on a dating site, then you can use a different photo that's more casual. But when people are looking and researching your brand, they're gonna do platform hopping and what's gonna happen? They wanted to see without burning a lot of calories in their brain that you are the same person. Well, you wanted to make a seamless experience for your audience uh, when they're researching you, so they see that you are the same in all the all the touch points. Does it make sense? Because if you go platform hopping and you see different photos, you're gonna have to. Is that the same person? Oh, that's weird. You know, like make it a seamless experience for your clients. Choose one signature photo, commit with it and update everything, including your Google uh, email, Gmail address and all the signature photos that you put with your emails and everything. Make sure all the photos are the same. Your headshots are really your hand shape and is the first thing that people will see and one mistake that I see people doing all the time is that um, instead of putting a headshot on their social profiles, they put a three quarter photo or a full photo, a full body photo. And what happens there, guys, think about the size of that little circle or the thumbnail that you see on the profile next to your name. It's super, super tiny, right? So make it easier for people to see who you are. Headshot is really your head only. A little bit of your shoulders. It's not even a head and shoulder. It's a super close up of your face. So I wanted to adjust your social profiles with your headshot and zoom in as much as possible. Just have your face and to show a little bit of your shoulders. The headshot should be clean. Most, you know, with the plain background is even better because it's all about your face. I do have one here, it's a um, headshot in nature, but you see the background is all blurred. So there's no competition, it's all about your face. Have in your arsenal some three quarter photographs. So it's about like knee up. Oh, here's Emery, she's here in this meeting. <laughs> so, um, you know, have a variety of photographs and knee up. Really for social media and for websites, you're not gonna use many full body photographs. But full body is also nice, um, depending how you use. And it doesn't have to be necessarily just a standing shot of a full body. It could be a sitting photograph. Again, 
variety of um, locations is really nice and try to tell a story. And these are super important for website sections. These are the call to actions and we call the CTA. They help to guide uh, your viewer to look at something. Whether you are just pointing in that direction, you're conveying, you're suggesting with your body language for people to look a certain way. These are great to compliment, um, you know, your copy, you know? So, and, and the expression of that um, photograph, the, the expression in your face should match the tone of the copy. And it's funny enough, you see Nancy Gensokoff right here, she has a kind of a cheeky expression, right? And it's fun because when you see a different expression, even if it's not the best face ever, you might be making a weird, goofy face. That's when people get intrigued. What's going on there, you know? You get their attention and have them stop in their tracks. Now, website customization. Here, I took an example from my own website. You should all have an introduction section if you have a personal brand. So you have your hero section, which is the first section of the website that we already spoke about. Then have an introduction section. Hey, hi, this is me. This is what I do. I do this for this ideal client. This is my, you know, these are the problems that I solve. And then they can find out about, about more about you in your about section where you should have even more photos of you. You have also the footer of your website where you can use a little more photographs, you know, uh, customize. Use every section to be able to show more of you. That way people start becoming familiar with you as a brand. And here's Look or Little again. This is uh, what I call negative space, having a person on one side of the, the shots and then having the negative space to fill with copy. So that's, that's just how you should be creating website sections. The trend is to have big fonts, um, have less copy, more images, and make it easier for people to read and digest your information. Have lots of call to action buttons on your websites, make it easier for people to get in touch with you. So this is, you know, a variety. So you wanna know something really funny about Dr. Luke Orleto? When he came, he's a busy entrepreneur. He didn't have the time or patience to go through honing the wardrobe. I have a process to get the wardrobe curated prior to the shoot. My clients have to send me selfies of them with the, wearing their outfits for me to pre-approve and um, adjust prior to the photo session. But he didn't do that. But he shows up with a luggage almost my size, full of clothing. He put out all the clothing he had in his wardrobe and brought to my studio. And I actually, I'm proud of how I actually curated his wardrobe on the spot. So as he is a speaker, um, we did the photos in the studio. And of course he got a gorgeous website designed by this company called Influx, which is the number one company in the world designing personal brand websites. I suggest you guys visit influx.com and get inspired in how they use photographs everywhere in their um, website designs. So again, he travels all over the world, take people on retreats. So it makes sense for his brand to have colorful and things like that, like a Hawaiian shirt. You know, that's part of his wardrobe. <laughs> And that's how you use, you know, again, big photos. And then you can put a gradient filter here. So um, it's easier for the text to stand out. You no, know? so that, that's just a few examples here. And this is another trend on personal branding websites, the footer where you have your social media logos. Why not utilize and make a full section um, and, you know, again, create a visual impact. 
And that's pretty much it, guys. I'm gonna be opening for Q&A. I think this presentation went a little longer than uh, uh, expected. If you are here and you've stayed to the end, if you wanted to work with me, I'm gonna give you $100 off headshots, $200 off a lifestyle branding session, a free brand consultation so you can pick my brain for half an hour. And this is my website, carolinalunaphotography.com. And you can ask me any questions. Who are you gonna be <laughs> and how are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, don't be shy. This is yeah. the time where we're gonna have some hot seats. Don't be A, I want it to be B. Like Absolutely. <laughs> Unmute yourself and ask any questions while we're waiting for people to do that. I would just like to say, I thought this was wonderful and as, um, somebody who with my position here at the library, I always say, oh, we help all entrepreneurs and anybody who needs help.